All right, well, we're picking up where we left off last week in our series through uh, Mark's Gospel called Serving Like Jesus. If you have your a copy of Scripture, uh, God's Word with you, then you can turn to chapter 13. And today we're going to, uh, last week we're, our message was t- entitled Be Ready. So uh, chapter 13 is the Olivet Discourse, and, and it's about the end times uh, and the signs of the end times. And, and so uh, uh, last week we, we encouraged you to be ready. This week we want to encourage you to be watchful. Be watchful. We're going to pick up there. Read the words of Jesus with me as we pick up in verse 24. We're going to read down through the end of chapter 13. A longer passage, just like last week, than what we deal with a lot of times. But uh, bear with me. We're going to get through it, and hopefully you guys will uh, will pick up some truth that God uh, God will help you with today. But Jesus said, But in those days after that tribulation... The sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of heaven says, now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has become, has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But at that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It's like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. So Jesus says, watch therefore. For you do not know when the master of the house is coming. In the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly, he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. These are the words of Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, we do bow before you this morning. And God, we're grateful for this word of truth. And Lord, we just pray today that uh, your Holy Spirit would supernaturally open the eyes of our hearts and our minds that we might understand better who you are, and Lord, and believe more firmly that uh, you are coming again. God, we look forward to that day as uh, one of your children, Lord, where we'll be with you forever and all things will be made new. And so, God, we pray that today that every person that hears this message will be excited about your return and looking forward to it and we ask it in jesus name amen so be watchful be watchful you know my my earliest school days meant riding the bus from one of the most northern most homes in mcmean county to nyota elementary school we were the first ones on the bus and in the morning and we were the last ones off in the afternoon and so it made for a really long day we got on the bus and i don't know what time it was you know when i was in kindergarten i didn't care what time it was did you (laughs) but anyway it was early it was dark dark 30 was what time the bus came okay i know that and uh and so it was before seven o'clock i remember my mom saying you know it was six something and and and, and, and then by the time I got off the bus, most of the time it was about 4.30 when I got home. That's a long day for a five-year-old. But anyways, that, that, that was it. But my cousins, my mom's brother's children who lived next door, they would come and we, we would take turns standing in our house at the front door. Uh, and, and the early days we had to stand on a chair, uh, you know, because it had just a window in it. You know, it was kind of up. So you had to stand in a chair and look out that window. 
and uh, it was on the old 68 highway. They built a new highway since then, and and we would watch for the bus because when we saw the bus coming, we'd run out the house and run about a quarter of a mile uphill to the highway to catch the bus. And, and so I can remember, you know, uh, watching for the bus and and you know and and. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd get in trouble, you know, if one of us little ones didn't see it in time, you know. Uh, and, and But we watched for that bus. And I remember, you know, we would watch the highway. And like I said, it's about a quarter of a mile away and it's uphill, but you could see a little ways out and you'd watch for those lights coming. You know, the, you know but buses are lit up pretty well. And, uh, but um, a lot of times, big trucks sort of look like a bus. And, you know, false alarms were always uh, 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 frowned upon, you know. Uh, uh, but anyways, uh, especially on cold days when we'd take off running and, well, the bus wasn't on the way yet. But, but, but you know, we'd watch for those lights and we'd watch for that stop sign to start swinging out and then we'd run up and, and get on the bus and, and uh, because you know, those were the signs that we watched for that the bus was near. It was close. and That's when it's time to go. And in a similar way, in our text today, Jesus warned his followers to be watchful for his return. And he, he shared a few signs that we can really look for that can help us know when that return is near. And we've all heard it, haven't we? Uh, you know, uh, Jesus is coming soon and the signs of the times. There's some people seem like they get the newspaper and every day they look in a newspaper to try to figure out what signs have been completed and, and they try to set dates and I, know, I can tell you one thing for sure. The return of Jesus is closer than it's ever been before. And so Jesus tells us to be watchful. And the fact of the matter is that his return is imminent. And, and, and what I mean by that is you know, it, can, it can happen at any moment. You know, he could return at any time. I don't believe there's anything left prophetically that needs to take place for Christ to return. That's the reason I believe he could come at any time. and I believe at some point before the great tribulation or sometime in the middle of the tribulation period, the church will be called up to meet him in the air. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 1 Corinthians 15. A few other passages tell us that an event like that's going to take place. And we'll join all those believers who've gone before us there. And then at some point, then he'll bring us with him back down. To, to his return i don't know about you but that excites me uh, that it thrills me there's there's moments i find myself when i'm thinking on these things looking toward the eastern sky especially in the morning as the sun's coming up and i'm just like is today the day you know I, I i just i would love to be looking that direction when all of a sudden i see jesus on the clouds wouldn't you oh man <laughs> Do you eagerly await his return like that? Or does the thought of Jesus returning frighten you? You see, how you watch and wait for the return of the Lord may reveal important details about your spiritual condition. Because if you're, you belong to him and you know you're his, oh, you, you, you want that day. You, you anxiously await that day like a child waits for Christmas morning. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> and in this text, Jesus urged his followers, be watchful for his return. And I think that's part of what he was talking about. Watch! More or less, be ready and, and know and, and don't be caught off guard. And he talks about why a little bit more. And I, I want to share with you a few reasons this morning that you should be watchful for the return of Jesus. Be watchful for the return of Jesus. And, and we've already mentioned this first one, but, but um, I want you to understand you should watch for Jesus because His return can be anticipated by signs. There are things that take place and events that take place that, that uh, help us understand that Jesus uh, is coming back and he's at the door as, as the text kind of speaks and you know last week when we done the first part of this chapter uh, we talked about how 
Jesus said that in those days that there will be many claiming to be Christ. And we talked about a few of those people who claim to be, be Christ, so we know that's been fulfilled. And he talked about the increase in earthquakes and the earthquakes happening in different places. And I shared with you some statistics about earthquakes, and you can see that's been fulfilled. And we talked about famines and diseases that he talked about and how they'll become rampant, and we see how that's been fulfilled. And he talked about how Christians will be become persecuted more and more and we shared about how many Christians have been put to death just in the last century and and, and we know that's been fulfilled and Jesus talked about how the gospel would be need to be preached to all nations and today in our generation with the technology we have everyone can hear the gospel all at the same time all they need is a smartphone and a cell phone signal right and they can have access to the gospel. And we saw all these things have already been fulfilled. And we talked about the abomination of desolation, which has been fulfilled in the first part in AD 70 when the temple was destroyed and raided by Rome. And, and, but the second part will likely be what happens again at what we know as the great tribulation. And this is where Jesus kind of makes that separation. And that's where we've separated the text. And that's where we're starting today. The beginning of the great tribulation. And so I don't know, maybe it's going to begin exactly at that moment when this person stands in the temple and does this horrendous act that we talked about last week. And so that's going to be a sign. So we can watch for that. But from that moment, things will only get worse for those who are here on earth. Our text picks up at that point where Jesus gives more signs. Once this takes place, he says, but in those days. You see that in verse 24? He's talking about once the great tribulation starts, he says the sun will be darkened. Now this could prob possibly be referring to a solar eclipse, and we got to experience one of those here, a total eclipse, uh, totality here in Sweetwater just a few years ago, and, and those happen in different parts of the world. I noticed one, I think next year is going to be through the center of the country, and the Dallas area is going to be one of those places. And, and, and um, you know, but maybe this is an unusual solar event that, that's uh, not typical. I don't know, but, but he talks about the sun darkening. John revealed it this way in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12. He says, I looked when he opened the sixth seal and behold, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood. So Jesus says the moon loses its light and here John writes that it becomes like blood. It probably refers to the same event. And where the moon doesn't give light or if there's a, a red moon and you've heard preachers probably talk about the blood moon and, and this, these cycles and things and it may be some kind of lunar eclipse of some sort but but uh, maybe an unusual lunar event obviously and in verse 25 he says the stars of heaven will fall and he says and the powers in the heavens will be shaken and so uh, it, it, we see more from John's revelation on this in chapter 6 verses 13 and 14 he says and the stars of heaven fell to the earth and we see that kind of thing happen don't we but this must be some unusual meteorite shower right something worth noting more than what we typically see and he says these stars fall from heaven as a fig tree drops its late figs when there's a mighty wind. And then he says this. Look at verse 14. This is awesome. He says, Then the sky receded as a scroll is rolled up. And every mountain and island was moved out of its place. So, <laughs> man, that's, that's some kind of earthquake, isn't it? The sky is rolled up. It makes me think of sort of like a funnel cloud type thing, you know, just... You know how the, the clouds roll. I don't know exactly what it's going to be. And since this is future, we can't know for certain how these events will unfold. But what we can know is that we should be watching for an unprecedented upheaval in the heavens and a great shaking of the earth's land masses. Now, maybe or maybe not we'll be here when it, these things start. I, I don't know, but, but, but it, it, these signs will signal that the end has come. In heaven and on earth, 
the cosmos will be rocked and shaken as Jesus prepares to come this time in judgment. So we ought to be ready, shouldn't we? We ought to be watchful. Isaiah referenced it this way in chapter 13, verses 9 and 10. He writes, Behold, the day of the Lord comes cruel with both wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate, and he will destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth, and the moon will not cause its light to shine. Another reference to the same events. 600 years before Jesus. Coincidence? <laughs> no, my friend. Not a coincidence. A warning from God. A warning from God. These will be the signs that point to the return of Christ and the end of the world as we know it. And so we see these signs and, and we've talked about some of these signs. And you can read Matthew's gospel and Luke's gospel and read the Olivet Discourse. And there's other things, there are other things that are mentioned. But obviously we're preaching through Mark, so we're just dealing with these in this text. But there's going to be signs that point to the return of Christ and that it's near. And the end of the world is near as we know it. You know, every year sometime mid to late March, uh, I see these yellow flowers sprout from the warming earth. It's like they come up overnight. I believe they're called daffodils, am I right? I, 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 I'm not sure. <laughs> but, you know, they're perennials that I remember when I was young and, and I didn't care so much about the months and things, but there was, there was a patch of daffodils between our house and my mom's brother's house that would sprout up when it started warming up. And I remember noting that when those things come up, the weather's getting warmer. That was a sign to me. And I just remember being excited when I saw them. And I still think about that when I see them. Those daffodils coming up means war their warmer days are ahead. I don't know about you, but that excites me. I mean, we don't have terrible winters here, but... but um, they're long enough, in my opinion. But, but, but time and time again, throughout Scripture, we see these references to signs that signal the return of Christ is near. So, the, so is the end of the age as we know it. So that should excite you as a Christian. You should see these signs and, oh, the anticipation ought to boil in your soul. And it should be something you should look forward to. So, so we should be watchful for His return by looking for these signs to be fulfilled. Another reason to be watchful for the return of Jesus is not just because there's going to be these signs, but, but we ought to be watchful because his return can be seen. And when I read this passage, it excites me, and I, as I think about it, just like I talk about looking for him, the text tells us that after the great tribulation, and after we begin to see these signs mentioned, that Jesus will return. Notice verse 26. He, he says, then, see that? Then they will see the Son of Man coming. Now, the Son of Man, that's Jesus. And that's how he referred to himself most of the time. And that's a reference from Daniel and his prophecies about the return of Christ. And so, you will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and great glory. You know, think about when Jesus ascended into heaven in the, in the book of Acts. We read about it and how the, his followers are standing there gazing and angels say, Hey, get to work. He's coming back. In the same way that you saw him go. He went away on a cloud. He's coming back on a cloud. You know, in the clouds. And, and so Jesus had already mentioned something similar in, in Mark chapter 8 when we, we uh, preached that passage. He notes this. He says in verse 38, he said, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, he says of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed of when he comes in the glory of his Father with holy angels. So Jesus has already referenced this. Now he's talking about it again in Mark chapter 13. Listen, Jesus is coming again in glory. The first time he came, he came as a lowly babe. And he humbled himself. And, 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 and he suffered and he died. But when he comes again, he's coming in power. Who will see him when he comes back in the clouds? Jesus said they will see the Son of Man. It, it likely refers to everyone on earth, and I'll tell you why I believe that, because of Revelation 1-7. 
Revelation 1 7 says, Behold, he is coming with clouds. And look at this next phrase. And every eye will see him. See that? Even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. You see, every eye will see Jesus when he returns. That's a good reason to be watchful because you can see him when he returns. And when he returns in the clouds, you will see him. And notice what follows. If, if you belong to him, not only will you see him when he returns, but you're going to see him up close if you belong to him. Because look at verse 27. He says, and then he will send his angels and they will gather together his elect from the four winds. And I, that's the four corners of the earth. Now, I know the earth is a sphere, but, you know, that's just how we refer to it. North, south, east, and west, right? It covers it all. And he says, from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of heaven. And so, you see, Jesus' angels will harvest the work of all those who preach the gospel to all the nations on earth. That's what he left us here to do, isn't it? And when the angels come back, they're going to reap the harvest. They're going to gather to him from all four corners of the globe as well as the ends of the heavens. And so I think maybe this refers to the bringing the saints from the heavens to meet those saints who are still on earth in the air. <laughs> How awesome is this going to be? I mean, this is something to be watchful for and it's something to get excited about. And John gives us uh, the image of what this ultimately what this gathering is going to be like in Revelation chapter 7 verses 9 and 10 he says after these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations tribes peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying with a loud voice saying salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb and we'll sing that song like we sung this morning worthy worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive glory and blessing and honor and praise forever and ever <laughs> listen Jesus is coming back and he's coming back on a cloud and everyone will see him you know in, in 2017 or maybe 2018 is when it was released I'm not sure but Netflix released a series called Messiah now I've not seen it but I remember seeing the preview so I looked it up for, to share this with you it's a show about a modern day return of jesus and in this series he i understand that jesus conspicuously returns to the middle east and i'm not exactly sure how he returns but he then he begins trying to convince people that he's the messiah and so that's what the series is about i got news for you when jesus returns it's not going to be a secret <laughs> he won't have to convince anyone he's the Messiah. He will return in the clouds displaying great power and the glory of God and all the world will know for certain that he is God's Messiah. That's how he's coming back. <laughs> oh yeah, Jesus' return, it's going to be seen. And all those who are His will have a great reason to celebrate and worship the Lamb who made it all possible. But all those who don't know Him will suffer. Will suffer the judgment of God. So be watchful because He's coming again. And watch for those signs and, and watch for Him Another reason to be watchful for the return of Christ is this. And I want you to understand this. This, this one's a little longer, but, but his return can be a surprise. I want you to understand this. Uh, Jesus shares what all his hearers would know about a fig tree in verse 28. He, he tells this parable of the fig tree. And uh, you see, a fig tree bears its leaves just as summer begins. And soon after it bears those leaves, the fruit begins to appear. So, so you know that when you begin to see the leaves on the fig tree that it's summer. 
Summer's upon you. It's near. And so his, this illustration that Jesus gives of the fig tree points to his return. He says in verse 29, So you also, when you see these things happening, know that it's near. And he says, at the doors. <laughs> He affirms, you know, that when you see all these signs, you can know that his return is at the doors. Think about it for a minute. You know, when someone's at your door, how long will it be before you see them? Not long. Unless it's somebody you don't want to see and you hide, right? (laughs) I'm afraid that might be what it's like for some people when Jesus comes back. There's no avoiding it. You know it'll be soon, and folks, soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Look what Jesus says in verse 30. He clarifies it. He says, surely, assuredly, verily, or assuredly, I'm telling you the truth. He says, I say to you, this generation will by, in no, by no means pass away till all these things take place. Now, this generation can mean a few different things, and I'm not going to take time to share them all with you, but I believe it refers to, just like what we would naturally assume, is that it refers to the generation that sees all these signs. The generation that sees all these signs together will see Jesus return. You know, the tribulation, according to Daniel 9, 27, will be a period of, of seven years. And if that's true then that generation will witness all these events in less than 10 years. That generation, they all won't die until they see Jesus return. That's what he's saying. Oh, man. And look what Jesus says. He says in verse 31, he says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So you can count on these things. (laughs) You know why? Hey, listen. Jesus' words are a sure thing. If Jesus says it, mark it down in the certain column, right? Uh, You don't have to wait on it to happen. It's as good as done. (laughs) The, The temple will pass away. History as we know it will come to an end. The present heaven and earth will give way, as Scripture tells us, to a new heaven and earth. But God's word, the words of King Jesus... They will never pass away. (laughs) They're always true. Isaiah 48 says the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. This means that Jesus is certainly coming again because he said he's coming again. You can watch for the signs and you can see when he's at the door and you can know when the time is near, but exactly when he comes... That's going to be a surprise. Note verse 32 in the words of the Lord. He says, but of that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Now, it sounds crazy at first that Jesus doesn't know the time of his return. I mean, it's hard to even reconcile that since he's omniscient and supposed to know all things. The only way it makes sense is the incarnation. You see, when Jesus, when the Son of God humbled himself and was born as a baby, he laid aside some of the attributes of existing as God. Now, he never ceased to be God, but but as a baby born on earth, he had to learn how to walk, and he had to learn how to talk. And eventually he, you know, he got hungry and he was thirsty and he became tired and he needed rest and he needed sleep and and he felt pain and it was all necessary so that as a man, he could die as a substitute for our sins. And so when Jesus spoke to his followers, he was in that limited person. And so as he spoke to him, I guess... Perhaps he had limited that knowledge, and so he could say he didn't know exactly when. That's the only way I can explain it. Now, I know it still sounds crazy, and I hate to say it, Jesus didn't know something like that, but it's the only explanation that I can come up with. But what I want you to do is not worry about that too much. Let's pay attention to what he's saying. He's saying that no one knows. 
But we shared with you last week, how many times have you read somebody who picks a date and says this is when Jesus is coming back? Well, let me tell you something. I guarantee you, whatever that date is, that's not when he's coming back because the Bible says no man knows. And I don't believe God would ever uh, send Jesus back at a time that some man predicted, uh, you know, because, you know, you think about it, it, it it's crazy in a way. It's going to be a surprise when he comes back. You know, we don't know exactly when it's going to be. We know he's coming, and we can see it's close, but we don't know exactly when. You know, on my first trip to Africa, I went, I went on this mission trip to Uganda. I believe it was 1999. And uh, on Sunday morning, our team was split up to attend a few different worship services in the area, and I went to this one church that was sort of, it was sort of an open-air pavilion, a mud church building with a tin roof and dirt floor. And, and I noticed several people walking around, and they were praying. And, and um, you know, some, I noticed some came in, and they, they went, came up front, and they knelt down, and they prayed. And then they would go to every seat in that building, and they would kneel and pray at every seat for about an hour. Everybody that came in prayed like that. They were praying for God to move in that service. It was awesome and convicting. And, um, but that's what was going on. And, and I, I believe the service was supposed to start at 10 a.m. And so I noticed it was getting close, and I got a little antsy. You know, it didn't seem like there were a whole lot of people there. And, and uh, a, few, you know, a few folks kept showing up, and eventually it was 10-10. And uh, I asked, finally I asked our translator, I said, when are we going to start? He said, oh, we'll, we'll start when everybody gets here. Now, if you've ever been to a third world country, maybe you understand this, but, but you see, these laid back Africans, they're not, they're not tied down to a clock like you and I. <laughs> they're not concerned with what time the clock had on it. The time to begin wasn't really 10 a.m. The time to begin was when everyone was there. That's the way they worked. And, and so... <laughs> it's just the way it is and so listen to me listen we don't so you don't know when the, their service is going to begin nobody knows <laughs> you know nobody cares exactly what time and listen to me we don't know what the day or the hour that jesus returned but but we know for certain that he will and when he returns folks listen to me when he returns that's when the end will begin that's when things get good for us. And that thing, when things get really bad for the wicked one. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. And so no one except God knows when the return of Christ will take place. So when you see these dates set, you know, that's not, that's not when Christ is coming. These people are arrogant to think they know something that even Jesus didn't know when he was a man. Think about it that way. But Jesus will return, and in order to be ready for that return, and by trusting in him by grace through faith, and when we look for him to return, we're to be watchful. Be watchful. And, and these last few verses kind of share with us a little bit about what Jesus has told us to do as we watch. He said, he's, look in verse 33, he says, Take heed, watch, and pray, for you don't know when the time is. Be watchful. Watch and pray. And then he gives us this illustration of a man. He says, Jesus has left us like a man who leaves his house. And he leave, he's left us in charge, uh, you know, of the door, so to speak. And, and so when he comes back, you don't want to be asleep and not watching the door. And so this is what Jesus done to us. He's given us a great test. He's left us in charge and he's given us a task to proclaim the gospel to people. That's their door to heaven, folks. That's their door to eternity is the gospel of Jesus. And we're in charge of that. And so when he returns, we don't want to be asleep. We want to be busy opening the door for people. Does that make sense? <laughs> oh, You see... We're to pray for him. We're to watch for his return and share the gospel so that when he returns, he can gather up all those who belong to him. And so we're to watch for his return and we're to pray for his return and we're to work to bring all those who will believe in him into his church 
So when his church is completed, then he'll return. <laughs> That's your purpose as a child of God. That's our purpose as a church. Don't be found asleep and doing nothing when Jesus returns. Watch, pray, and work. And soon we'll see him. You know, just like I used to watch for the lights on the school bus. I want to ask you, are you watching for the return of Jesus? Are you being watchful? Have you given it a lot of thought? Right, but more importantly, are you ready for his return? He could come at any moment. We don't know exactly. And now's the time to prepare your heart to receive him so he can receive you when he comes. Now's the time to do that. And so I want to ask you this morning, will you come to Jesus today? Maybe the Holy Spirit's convicting you. Maybe you're scared to death for these events to take place. And if you're afraid, you don't have to be. All you have to do is believe on Jesus. And call out to him. He, he suffered and died on Calvary's cross to pay the debt of your sin. So that if you believe in him, you can escape that and inherit eternal life. So if you come to him today, he will save you. And when he comes, he'll call you up to him. That's where I want to be. And I hope that's where you want to be. And I hope that's where you will be. Let's all bow our heads. Let's respond in faith as we sing this morning. Father, we bow before you right now. And God, we thank you for your word. And Lord, we know that Jesus is coming soon. Lord, we pray that right now, if there's folks here that are not ready, that right now they'll come to you in faith. And Lord, they'll, they'll be made ready by you. And Lord, be anxious for your return. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.